<laughs> Hi, we're from Pomona High School, and today we will be talking about The Bee Meeting by Sylvia Plath. So, let's talk about The Bee Meeting. The first thing I'd like to bring up is the fact that we have this female persona. Okay? Mm -hmm. Tell me, what did we notice about this female persona as we went through the poem? I think she feels really left out. You want to expand on that? What do you mean? She feels left out. I mean, she says, well, she came in and she says, who are these people at the bridge to meet me? And she's asking a bunch of questions, like, uh, why did nobody tell me? Um, and then, does nobody love me? I just feel like she doesn't feel like she fits in. Okay. Or she just doesn't know what's going on at first. Robert, do you want to expand on that? She doesn't feel like she fits in idea? Um, well, I feel like that's true, because even in the, the first line of the second stanza, she says, I am new as a chicken neck, does nobody love me? So I feel like in a lots of different ways, she feels kind of left out and out of place. That is a great line. Let's talk about the nude as a chicken neck line a little bit more. What is, it's a simile, right? <laughs> so what, what would that mean? You feel, I, I am nude as a chicken neck. She doesn't have, like, any cover or anyone to, like, really, like, or... Yeah, she just doesn't have any, like, anything to cover her. Anything to cover her, okay. It's kind of a, Nikki? It's kind of a reference to stanza one, line three. My sleeveless summer dress, I have no protection. So, like a chicken egg, she has no protection. What do we do with chicken necks? Do you cut them? We cut them, right? Oh, okay. We chop we chop them off. <laughs> and then they, they run around for a while without a uh, head on, right? So, I mean, she says, I feel as nude as a chicken neck. So do you think that she feels like violence is going to come to her? Edgar, what do you think? Um, in a way, yes. Just because I feel like there's a lot of, I feel like she's scared or guilty. There's just something about, like, her feelings um, that make everything so uncertain just because it says, does anyone love me? I have no protection. And then she also does repeat a lot of stuff. So it says, they will not smell my fear if I feel my fear. So mm -hmm. I feel like that goes along with uh, being uncertain about everything. So you said that maybe she's scared or she feels guilty. I want to, I want to expand on that idea, right? Do we think that this female persona is just scared? Or do we think that she's guilty? She feels guilty. And if she it does feel guilty, what does she feel guilty for? Julian, what do you think? Well, I think she feels like overwhelmed instead. Like, okay. I don't think it's like guilty or like fear. I just think she's overwhelmed with like everything that's going on and stuff. Why do you think she's overwhelmed? Like what is overwhelming her? Well, there's like all these people like surrounding her and stuff and then like, she like, I don't know, she's like, she's like, does nobody love me? Like, I feel like she doesn't know, like, what's right or, like, what's real, like, what's not real. Like, are they there for her or are they just there? Because, like, they have to be or Okay. Nick? Um, so I was looking through this and does nobody love me? I'm thinking that maybe uh, she was the old hive queen and uh, the new hive queen is kind of taking over and that now the new Hive Queen is there, is she, does nobody actually love her, and was she just there to produce babies and do that? There is that bee metaphor going on. I mean, the poem is called The Bee, the bee Meeting. Meeting, right? And especially towards the end, we get this whole Hive Queen, and I mean, maybe we can transition and come back to this whole idea of her being guilty or her being afraid or her being overwhelmed, maybe a little bit later if we want to talk about the B metaphor that's going on throughout the poem. What do we think about this whole connection? Tell me about bees. I feel like the bees um, connect back to people because in, um, in the ninth line it says, I'm now milkweed seed, the, bee, the bees will not notice. So I feel like relating back to people, she's giving the people, like she's putting them in places bees. So I feel like she's saying like people won't notice. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So if are the if the people are bees, is she the queen? Well, the queen is a bee. The queen is a bee. Yeah. What do we know about queen bees? Um, they're they're the ones that control like the entire beehive. Um, they're usually the biggest. Um, 
They also produce a lot of eggs at a time. They're the ones that make the babies, mm -hmm. all right, yeah. Anything else that we know about bee queens? What happens to a hive when the queen leaves? The new one? Or chaos? They pick a new one? They, sometimes they pick a new one, but if there isn't one, they swarm, right? Yeah. And they get they're different, right? They're very docile, and that's when uh, beekeepers can actually go and take those bees, and if they provide another queen, then they can keep them, right? They can put them into a hive. That's the best time to work with bees, is when the queen is not present. So knowing that about bees, how can that help us to interpret this poem? So maybe she is a new bee? Maybe she's the new queen? Mm -hmm. We want to expand on that, Lana? Um, well, it kind of, like she uses, I feel like she uses a lot of metaphors for like different things. But at the beginning she says, who are these people at the bridge to meet me? They are the villagers. So like maybe the villagers are like the other bees. Mm -hmm. And it's like the rector, midwife, and sexton. So the, the like, a rector is like a member of clergy, and like a midwife is a person to assist in childbirth, and then the sexton is like the person who looks after like the general like, like in a church would be the churchyard. Yeah. So it's like the agent for the bees. So it's like they're she's meeting these like the people in charge. The thing is, a sexton can also mean it was formerly known as a grave digger. So maybe he's either he's about to like welcome her because he just recently buried the new queen or maybe instead of her becoming a new queen maybe she's going to be done because in the last stanza she's slowly fading away so maybe mm -hmm. he's coming to bury her and the representatives are trying to say like one sector of each part of your life is trying to um, like say like you matter to us at this one point, but now you are dying. We want to give you that respect. Let's actually go to the last stanza and let's kind of reread it very quickly. So it says, I am exhausted, I am exhausted, pillar of white and a blackout of knives. I am the magician's girl who does not flinch. The villagers are untying their disguises, they are shaking hands. Whose is that long white box in the grove? What have they accomplished? Why am I cold? So, going off of Nikki's interpretation, how can we bring this last stanza in as well? Susie, what do you think? Um, I feel like she is slowly dying because in the second line of the last stanza, a pillar of white and a blackout of knives, it's like a opposite like symbolism thing where like white is black and it's, it represents negativity. <laughs> And then on the last, very last line, who is that long white box in the grove? I feel like that's like her, like, coffin. Yeah, you think oh, so? She's so. waiting for her, and she doesn't know that. Like, and then she realizes, like, why am I cold? And she yeah, knows. which is interesting symbolism because, I mean, I guess coffins could be white, but yeah. normally I don't think they are. You know, I haven't seen a ton of coffins in my life, but normally they're darker wood colors, you know, and sometimes even black. Josh? So Queen Bee's... Um, die in the winter always or like maybe, like usually right at the beginning of winter and that like and usually they survive a few years so the thing that she says that she's cold kind of might mean that she's like reaching the end of her tenure and maybe this is kind of like her like as we said earlier it's kind of like going through or in the, at the beginning of the poem she might have been a new queen bee maybe this is kind of like describing her journey through life as kind of being this queen maybe she's in charge of like some group of people and then like how does that metaphor to the real world Julian well I don't think she's like the old thing and like dying because the stanzas 8 and 9 talk about like the old queen and like she's gone so I feel like she is like a new queen like long in the same okay just, like, so she's the new one coming yeah. in then yeah like interesting I like in stanza nine, it says, or in stanza 10, I'm sorry, the last stanza, it says the villagers are untying their disguises, but they don't include the speaker, right? This woman persona, right? Like everybody else seems to be taking off their disguises and they all seem to be doing things to this woman persona, but she doesn't necessarily participate and she doesn't take off her disguise. 
right? If she's wearing a disguise. What do you think, Danielle? Could it be like the beekeepers that are like holding to her? Like it could yeah. be like maybe like the whole colony of bees that they're taking out the women. So when they're like switching queen bees and then yeah. And they seem to dress her up, don't they? Like first she's in a sleeveless summery dress at the very beginning, which doesn't seem very protective, right? Like a summery dress makes me think of very thin fabric and maybe doesn't have, it's sleeveless, right? I mean, they say that, it's sleeveless, so you don't have sleeves protecting you. Um, but then they dress her up, and what do they put her into? A fashionable white straw Italian hat. Even before that, hair. what do they put her into? A blue coat. No, that's a midwife. A white oh. shop smock, right? And they button the cuffs at her wrists, and then they button the slit in the, whatever the smock is, all the way down, right? Um, so that seems to be a little bit more protective, right, than what she was wearing before. And then she goes in and gets dressed in. A fashionable white straw Italian head in a black veil. What does that suggest? Like a beekeeper. Yeah, it does look like a beekeeper's, right, because she has that black veil and she has the white hat. But, I mean, is there any other symbolism that we could connect to that? Uh, the white straw Italian hat and the black fail that molds to my face. It's like a wedding. It could be like a wedding, yeah, right? Like yeah, that's what you thought of, Lana. The wedding imagery, Robert. What did you think? <clears throat> kind of the same thing. The wedding. The wedding imagery. Yeah. I would agree. I would say that there's this wedding imagery going on. So it's like they're forcing her into these things, right? They're forcing her to be something. They're forcing her to get married. They're forcing her to wear the protective guard because the sleeveless summary dress is just not good enough, right? You need to be wearing this smock in this instance. And I think that that has something to say. Sylvia Plath is trying to tell us something about being female, right? What, what could we, what theme could we pull out? What is Sylvia Plath trying to tell us about being female in this poem? They don't have control over their lives. They're kind of like other people control them and they decide how they live their life. Okay. Susie? Um, I agree with Lana and also I think being female is people sometimes think are oh, like a minority or like less valued than men in that. So like we can't do what we want and like certain cultures don't allow females to do what they want. Okay. And maybe like the B culture or something like that. Mm -hmm. Julian? And I think, like, some people, like, just view women as, like, the ones that, like, have the children. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the queen bee, like, she only is, like, there for, like, making other bees. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a great point, right? We bring it back to that bee imagery. And that, that some people do. Like, they feel like this population of people that we have in the world is, is different and or lesser, right? And I think that that's what Sylvia Plath is struggling with. And if we come back to that idea of her being scared or guilty, do you think, Edgar, that she feels guilty because she is inherently female? I don't think. Or maybe she's scared because she's inherently female? I feel like she's more scared because she's a female, not guilty, just because I don't see why she would feel guilty, but I feel like she's more scared of being female because like, people do expect those things of her, and I don't think she's like, necessarily ready to do that. Okay. Julie. Um, also, like, in stanza six, she says, I cannot run. I am rooted in the gorse hurts me. And she says, I could not run without having to run forever. Which I feel like also talks about, like, her, like, having no control. Yeah, she feels stuck. She's trapped. Yeah, she is trapped. And it's because of who she is. The last thing I want to bring up, and then we're going to be done, is there are phrases that Sylvia Plath repeats over and over and over through the entirety of the poem, right? So let's find some of those phrases. My fear, my fear, my fear. See, but that's just that one time, right? There's these two word phrases that get repeated. They're usually at the beginnings of lines or the beginnings of sentences. Is it, right? Yes. Is it gets repeated a lot. What else? Which. Which is. Which is. 
How about they are, mm -hmm. yeah. and then on the opposite, I am, right? They are and I am are the ones that I really want to talk about, right? They are and I am. And I think that that can connect us one more time to the idea that she feels different from everyone else, right? She keeps saying, they are this, they are this, they are this, and I am this, I am this. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. That's all the time we have. My friend over there is telling us that we're out. So thank you for joining us for the B meeting. Good night. <laughs> yeah.